Hello Shirley Tebow fans and friends, this is her son Nick Cranky, and I finally uploaded the first article even though I promised forever and ever and ever, but it, it's pretty small, you gotta zoom in and stuff, so I just thought I'd do a little screen capture video of this, so I'm gonna zoom in and you could read it along with me, like kind of like a Mr. Rogers or something, I don't know, anyhow, here we go, let's zoom in here and see, hopefully you can see good, so the this article is a father's love overcomes barriers of time and space and let me see when was this one is there a date on it or did it already get cropped out Shh. yep whoa 78 whoa are you serious whoa okay man i don't know anyhow here we go love trans love transcends all barriers and moments of the greatest understanding come at unexpected times on this father's day sandy jackie's daughter would like to share some of those moments i'm lying on the back uh, excuse me i'm lying in the back of the filled auditorium listening to the voice guiding me into a deep relaxation at 11 i'm the youngest at the brad steiger reincarnation seminar a half hour has passed and the first part of the seminar is coming to an end as i listen to mr steiger's voice saying you will wake up feeling relaxed and at ease tears are streaming down my face I'm not crying loudly, perhaps because of my 11-year-old sensitivity towards embarrassing situations, yet I am filled with emotion. My mother notices me and asks if I am all right. I quickly pull myself together and say yes. After all, I am the one who had convinced her that I was old enough to handle this type of thing. She tells me that we are going out to lunch and that we can talk then. I understand and give her an appro approving, really, I'm okay, mom smile through my teary face. It's 12.35 and I'm sitting in a restaurant between my mother and Mr. Steiger sipping cold cucumber soup and thinking to myself, gee, what a day this is. So many new things. I'd never had cold soup before, nor have I ever had a dream that felt so real. My mother asks if I'd like to talk about my experience and I say yes. Even as an embarrassed 11-year-old, I love to share my experiences and feelings. What happened? I saw my father. Ray? No, my father, not my dad. I had never made this distinction between my natural father, who died in an accident a month before my birth, and my present dad, who my mother married when I was two. Yet my response to my mother was direct and matter-of-fact, as if it had been ingrained. What did you see him, or where did you see him? I was in China, and he came down from the sky and stood next to me. We did not say anything to each other. He just grabbed my hand and took me with him. Where did he take you? Flying, I replied, a bit embarrassed. We flew over some mountains and then some rice fields, and then we landed in this field near some towers. I had begun to cry again, and my mother told me I didn't have to continue if I didn't feel like it, but I did. There was something comforting about sharing this new experience with people that I knew would take me seriously. He spoke to me. He told me that he loved me, that he had to go, that he would be back. I begged him to stay. He told me I would understand. I am sad, Mom, but he was right. I do understand. While the waitress cleared my soup bowl, I looked over at Mr. Steiger. He was smiling at me, and he asked, Will you be joining us for the second half of the seminar? Yes, I replied. I want to. I did not encounter my father in the second session. A part of me knew I wouldn't. My experience, however, was amazing. But I didn't have time. I don't have time to tell it now. Perhaps another time. I should add that although my interest in this area of spirituality and psychic phenomena has continued, I have not been to another seminar like this one since. I simply have not felt the need or the desire. Since the moment my father left me on the rice field, I have known that he was always with me. On that day, he had given me a wonderful gift, faith. April 21, 1986, 2 p.m. My brother, my mother, and I are riding on a bus. I'm not really listening to the tour guide. I hardly ever do. I'm letting my mind wander as I gaze out the window at the vast rice fields. I'm glad I decided to come on this trip to China. I hadn't had a big desire to go at first, but I knew that this could very well be a once-in-a-lifetime chance, so I took it. As my stomach growled, I thought, the food here is horrible, the people wonderful. The bus came to a halt, and I'm glad to get out. We are at the top of a hill looking down over a valley of rice fields. On the hill are two ancient towers. My brother and I finish playing camera happy tourist and climbing the towers so, so I walked over to the edge of the hill.
My mother is standing there. We are both silent for a moment, and then we stare at each other in what has come to known in my family as the hoo-hoo way. For the first time in years, I am reminded of my reincarnation experience. I say to my mother, nothing more than this is the place. She replies, yes, it is. Exactly as you described. My mother, sensing that I need some time alone, walks off to join my brother. I guess the best word to describe it is faith. I feel blessed with a faith in love, faith in kinship, faith in death, and transcending dimensions. The bus honks and I get back on. On the ride back, I'm thinking, why China? My questioning is subdued by the voice in my head saying, when it's important for you to know why, you will. May 22, 1988, 11.30 a.m. I'm sitting in my black robe and a funny looking black hat on my head and of course a pair of lime green sunglasses. I can't believe I've been at this college for four years and that I'm graduating. I look out into the crowd trying to find my family. My eyes are quickly drawn to a man with a bright red sports coat and a pair of lime green sunglasses. I turn to the graduate on the right to whom I have just introduced myself. See that man in the red jacket? That's my dad. I'm I proudly announce to her. He looks like a great dad, the girl replies. He is, I mutter, more to myself than to her. My thoughts stray from the rather boring speaker to my dad. Geez, I love that guy. He is truly the best dad one could ask for. I support I would be I wouldn't be who I am today if it weren't for his love, support and humor. My thoughts are led to my father. I feel his presence. The speaker is finished, and the moment of silence is called for in order to individually thank those who have helped us along the way. Thank you, Dad, for being who you are and helping me become who I am. Thank you, Father, for your faith. And, of course, the byline. Shirley Tebow is a Federway psychic, and Jacqueline Weatherwright, a student of psychic phenomena. Readers with questions may write. Well, that's not a valid address anymore. But anyhow, I hope you like